Having seen the basic requirements that are needed for your memory management in operating system, in today's session of operating system, we'll be move on, moving on to the next topic, which is nothing but swapping. And the next topic we'll cover in today's session is contiguous memory allocation. We'll see each one of them in detail. Moving on to swapping, as it implies, the general meaning of swapping is moving from one place to other, right? Now, we'll see what is the basic need, why we actually require swapping in operating system. As you can see, this is your main memory where one part of your main memory is stored with your operating system and the remaining part of this memory is utilized for storing your process or programs. So when you want the program to be executed, it is compulsory that the program should be present in your main memory. Now see this, now I want to go for achieving multi-processing or multi-programming where you have these many processes present or these many programs present in your main memory. Now, at some point of time, you want to get a new process. I have P1, P5 and P6, but I want to get a new process P2 into the main memory, but my main memory is not sufficient here. So in that case, what I have to do, I have to take away one of the process which is already in the main memory so that we call it as swap out. And from the main memory where you are going to store that particular program, you will be storing it in your secondary memory. So when you go for this secondary memory, you can even calling it as a packing store. Similarly, whatever program you want to execute or the process you want to execute that you want to bring it back to your main memory. So this we call it as swapping. So moving out a process is nothing but swap out and getting in a process from your secondary memory to your main memory is nothing but your swap in. And Basically, we generally go for using swapping where you want your CPU utilization to be more. Assume, even though you have P1, P5 and P6, assume P1 got some waiting, input output weight or some other weight, right? It is waiting. So in that case, uh, none of them are ready for execution and the CPU cannot just sit idle. So it has to make a selection, some process to select, swap it out and then come back for swapping. And now, We'll see what are the reasons why we want to swap in and swap out. The first case is round robin scheduling. And as you all know, each process will be given some amount of time. And once that process finishes executing for such amount of time, and if you are able, you're not able to find a space in your main memory, what you do, you move out the process which has finished its time slice and get the new process. You may have a situation where when you go for priority scheduling, so you are executing a prior, lower priority process and you got a higher priority process and you have no way to get that into your main memory. So the lower priority process will be moved to your secondary memory. And when you are performing these operations, either in the case of round robin or higher priority, you are moving out and moving in, right? Now, assume P1 and P2, I have moved out of Freeze to into your secondary memory and what your P2 into your main memory. Now, sometimes later, you want again these things to be swapped. So, you want again P2 to move to your secondary memory and you want your P1 to come back to your main memory. So, in this case, what you have to do, if you go for seeing a pictorial representation, initially P1 was here, P3 was here, and P5 was here. Now, in due course, P1 was made a move out. So here you get P2 and when you want to again get P1 back, you have to see that P1 should again come back into the same position of your main memory. So when you go for your uh, execution, you have two types of bindings. You have to bind your program to your main memory as we have already seen in address binding. So when you go for your execution time, execution time binding, you can make the program to move into any other location. So previous location and the current location may not be same. Whereas when you are binding your memory at your load time, load time, it is compulsory that if you are moving out a process from this particular location, you have to again get back. So this movement of the process back into the same memory space or not depends upon your binding. And when you are selecting a process, so one is real. Now here, these are the important points which we are dealing with swapping. In first two cases, we have covered why we actually go for swapping. 
and when I am selecting a process for swapping and moving out, we are deciding whether to store it in the same location as previous or not. And the next thing you need to do is which particular process to be selected for swapping. So you take at most care that if any process is waiting for input or to operation, you should not select that particular process for swapping because in due course, the input output operation may be satisfied. Right. So these are the things which we need to keep into mind. Now, uh, suppose we'll see an example. So now this is my user process size and this is a data transfer rate at which you are transferring your data. Both of them we have converted into kilobytes. Now, when I say swap in and swap out, what you are doing, you are taking away the total process from one particular memory, moving on to the other memory. So the time that depends upon depends upon the how much amount of data you are moving from secondary to main memory, main memory to secondary memory and at what particular speed. So if this is your user process size and this is the data transfer rate, the time required is nothing but the size, whatever data you want to move divided by the transfer rate which will be giving you two seconds in this example, which is nothing but 200 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds only for swap in. Similarly, you want to even do out swap out, swap out and swap in plus together. You will be getting this as your four seconds. So those swapping will enhance your multi programming. Some amount of the time of your CPU is wasted only in transferring this data. Coming to the advantages and disadvantages of your swapping, the four most important advantages you want to go for multiple process within a single memory. And we deal with the virtual memory in detail. So it helps us to create multi uh, virtual memory and you want multiple tasks to be performed simultaneously and memory utilization will also be less. So in all the advantages, whatever you see, ultimately you want your CPU utilization to be high so that the throughput of the system will also be increased. Coming to the disadvantages. So while in the due course of swapping, if the system loses power, so the total of the information will be lost. And if the swapping algorithm, whatever you are implementing is not good, it really, uh, sorry, it relates to page fault. Page fault is nothing but you want a particular uh, data, but that data is not present in the main memory. So each time it has to go to your secondary memory to fetch the data. So this will page fault will see in detail when we go for the paging concept. Moving on to the next uh, topic, having seen uh, what is swapping, what is the basic need require, how do you select a process for swapping? Now we'll move on to the next topic, which is contiguous memory allocation. So when you go for seeing your memory, so you'll see a memory as a block and the lower part of your memory will be with operating system and this is all the empty space, right? So this normally we call it as a hole or we call it as chunk, chunk of bytes where you can store your data. So it is generally present. Now, till now we have seen that I'll move up put a process from the memory and get a new process into the memory, but when you see how actually you allot a process into the main memory. So now we'll go for seeing various memory allocation techniques. So the first technique we call it as static or fixed size allocation. The next one we call it as dynamic or variable size allocation. Coming to your fixed size or static allocation without touching your operating system, the remaining part of the memory or the user space, whatever you have, you go for dividing it into equal parts. So each of the block, assume if it, I call it as block one, block two or block three. So each of these parts will be of the same size. And if you are having a process, so that particular process will be brought into that particular empty block. So P1, P2, P3 will be stored. So this is fixed size. The size of each partition will be same and it is not going to change. Now, uh, when you can see this, uh, if the number of partitions, so when you see this here, uh, how many we could give it here? Uh, I've made it as three partitions. So the multi programming by seeing directly, you can say that how many programs can be executed simultaneously? Three. So the number of blocks are equal to the number of programs that are, can be executed simultaneously. But the main problem when you go for static or fixed size allocation here is nothing but. Uh, you are allocating a 5 MB of free empty location, but out of which your, your process size, actual process size is only 3 MB. 
So the total block of 5 MB you are utilizing only 3 MB and the remaining 2 MB is of no use. You cannot get a second process into that because it is a separate block. In the sub, in a single block you cannot do to go for storing two different process. So this is a wastage of your memory. Similarly, when you go for this, so 5, 5 MB, you are able to allocate only 3, 3 MB and the remaining part is wasted internally. So within a block, the memory is wasted. So that is the reason we call it as fragment, internal fragmentation. Wastage of memory within a block is called as internal fragmentation. And why do we get internal fragmentation? If the size of the block, whatever size of the block you have fixed is greater than the process size, the remaining amount of the block is of no use. In that case, you get internal fragmentation, uh, which can be overcome by making a move on to the next type of allocation, which we call it as variable size allocation. So when you go for seeing this variable size allocation here in this case, what we do is we don't go for partitioning any of these uh, empty locations operating system will be as it is and when you go for seeing this thing depending on the process for example if your process one is of 5 mb so the available total memory block will be first divided into 5 mb and you store p1 next 2 mb will be allocated to process p2 next 3 mb and next 4 mb so initially you will not have any problem and no internal fragmentation so your process size is equal to your partition size because the partition size is not fixed it is variable depending on your process size it is going to change right so you don't have any problem of internal fragmentation but in due course of moving a process from one uh, particular main memory to secondary memory or secondary memory to main memory, you may get a situation where after a process is being allotted, so you may get a situation like this. So these are three fragments which are being occupied and in between the fragments, you are getting some empty locations. So if I want to include a process which is of 55 KB, I assume I want to get a new process which is of 55 KB. This is empty. So here you assume this is your empty location, which is 40 KB. This is 10 KB and this is 55 KB. These are assigned, right? So together you are able to get 55 KB, but a process which is of 55 KB cannot be divided and accommodated on individual fragment. You want a continuous memory to be present. You will not be dividing a process. So even though you have the available memory at different locations you are not able to store it so this you call it as external fragmentation so wastage of memory when you are getting between the process then you call that as external fragmentation you were able to overcome internal fragmentation by moving on to this variable size but in variable size you get a problem of external fragmentation and we do have a technique of overcoming that external fragmentation that we'll be seeing it later. Now we'll move on to the next thing where now you have the partitions, uh, you are allocating the memory. Now, uh, when you see, when you have a memory with multiple partitions, how do you decide which particular partition is to be used for which particular process? So that we call it as partition allocation algorithms where you have three options first fit best fit and worst fit coming to the first fit you will be given assume these are the partitions which are already available now you got a process with 10 kb you go on searching in the memory and you find out the first empty location so whichever is empty and you are able to fit it so now for example 4 kb is also free but the size is 10 kb so you will not be able to fit it so go for the next empty location so next empty location is 20 kb which is free and 10 kb is less than that so you will be easily able to dump this particular process but you will not go for checking the next alternative first fit whichever first location is empty and if you are able to fit your process into that particular allocation just go for allocating the process into that particular block irrespective of whether there is a wastage of memory or not Coming to the best fit, even though when you have multiple options, assume I have 20 KB free here and 10 KB free here and I want to uh, store a process which is of 10 KB. So I'll start searching. This is not free. 
this is free but it is 20 kb so you move on this is not free and this is free so out of 20 and 10 kb which one is the best 10 kb so because this suits it you are not uh, if i allocate this 10 kb again to this 20 kb what you are happening here you will again left out with some empty space there internally right so here 10 kb will be allocated so best fit you generally go for the smallest option whichever is available now coming to your worst fit what you do in your worst fit you go on searching and identify a larger hole or a largest hole hole is nothing but empty block right so the largest hole which you can fit even though you have 20 kb 10 kb you are going to 80 kb and allocating its a process so this you call it as worst fit so whether you go for a first fit or worst fit you may get a situation where you are left out with empty fragments in between the process so that is nothing but your external fragmentation which we have already seen now we'll see how to overcome that external fragmentation so when you have external fragmentation the technique which we go for using is compaction so compaction is you gather all the empty locations at one particular place now when you just see this these are this is occupied by a process this is occupied by a process and you have 1 mb free space 4 mb free space so in compaction what you do is you move all the process at ahead and all the empty memory locations at the bottom so that when you want a new process uh, which is capable of holding 5 mb continuous memory will be allocated uh, in all these uh, scenarios whatever we have seen you want the process to be stored only at the continuous location you will not divide your process and store it so in compaction you have to do two things one is first of all you need to gather up all the empty things and then after you gather all the empty locations so p1 initially was at this location now you have to relocate it to some other location so the memory address of these particular process will also be changed so you have to gather the empty location and you have to move the process previously from one location to another location so these are the two things to be taken care coming to the advantage of it it reduces the external fragmentation no doubt and you get a continuous memory and when you have a continuous memory you know you have more number of process and ultimately the memory utilization is also more and the cp utilization is also more but when you are doing this rather than performing the normal operation what is the system doing here or your cpu doing here it is wasting its time in freeing up the memory moving all the process to one particular process so most of the time of your cpu will be wasted similar so here also as we have seen in the previous example you have to first move this so you have to calculate what amount of uh, process memory has to be moved what is the data transfer rate and how much amount of time is spent so all these are to be taken care so this uh, covers your contiguous memory allocation the problems with it and the compaction technique which is used to overcome this now we'll move on to the next topic in the next class